So I think Historic has been shooken up by Shrixhaven more than, like, any set has ever shaken up any format. It's it's kind of insane to look at where the format was before Shrixhaven and after Shrixhaven, and the big reason why is cards like Ephemerate. So, alongside all the normal Shrixhaven cards, some of which are actually seeing play in Historic themselves, uh, Historic had this whole secondary set of cards called Mystical Archives that were basically just some of the best instant sorceries from the history of Magic, um, including Ephemerate, and a lot of these are illegal and historic, so uh, what Ephemerate does is one white mana, it says exile target creature you control, then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control, and it has rebound, so what rebound does is after we cast it on our next turn, at the beginning of our upkeep, it gets recasted for free. So you can probably immediately guess what the strategy of our deck is here, which is, yes, it's going to be Enter the Battlefield abilities. We want cards in our deck that are creatures with Enter the Battlefield abilities that we can reuse. Um, a perfect example of this is Dusk Legion Zealot, which is a 2-mana 1-1, one, one, so a pretty meh body. But when it enters the battlefield, we get to draw a card and we lose a life. So you can already see the value here with Ephemerate. We, we play our Dusk Legion Zealot, it draws a card, replaces itself, then we ephemerate that Dusk Legion Zealot, it'll re-enter the battlefield, draw a card, and then on our upkeep we get to cast Ephemerate again for free, and with a free copy of Ephemerate we target Dusk Legion Zealot again, it enters the battlefield again, we get to draw another card, so in that case Ephemerate has effectively been a one mana draw to, which is really 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 powerful. And another great blink target from our deck that's kind of like a Dusk Legion Zealot on steroids is Callous Blood Mage. So, Callous Blood Mage is basically a charm on a body. A charm in Magic is a card that has like a bunch of different effects and you choose one or two of them. Um, and so but that's basically what Callous Blood Mage is, except his is an Enter the Battlefield ability. So we play him, he's a 3 mana 2-1. When he enters the battlefield, we get to choose one of three options. We either get to make a 1-1 one, one Pest token, which is pretty good against aggressive decks, you know, be paying 3 mana to make two bodies. One of which, when it dies, you get to uh, gain some life. That's a pretty good way to kind of clog up the board. And also with Ephemerate, if we're Ephemerating him and choosing that option multiple times, we can kind of go a little bit wider. Again, clog up the board pretty well. Even, you know, if our opponent has a Planeswalker we need to be attacking down, we can get through, you know, uh, individually big blockers by just making a bunch of pests. So great to blink for that reason. Also, it just does exactly what Dusk Legion Zealot does, which is uh, it lets us draw a card and lose a life. So it just has <laughs> Dusk Legion Zealot's entire ability as one of his options, which is really nice. Um, and then uh, third, and probably actually the most powerful ability on Callus Blood Mage, uh, we can exile target player's graveyard. So this is very, very good in Historic at the moment. Currently, there's just a ton of graveyard decks running around because the Mystical Archives have just kind of opened up all these Dreadhorde Arcanist decks where, uh, you know, cards like Brainstorm, cards like that one green mana cantrip, which I can't remember the name of, but uh, those cards are just really good cards on their own, and then you can play Dreadhorde Arcanist and get them back for free. So there's a lot of decks in the format right now that are just really reliant on their graveyard. So having a main deck way to just exile our opponent's entire graveyard can be really devastating against a lot of the format right now. So this blink strategy is kind of like the core engine of our deck. We have, you know, Blood Mage, Gaunti to steal our opponent's cards. We have Dusk Legion Zealot to draw cards. Yeah, Yarix Fenlurker to snipe cards out of our opponent's hand. We're even running a couple copies of Fourth Bridge Prowler as sort of a removal spell on a stick. It is sort of uh, limited in which decks it is good against. So during sideboarding, you know, if we're up against like a control deck or even just a deck that doesn't have a lot of X1s in it, this is a good thing to remove out. But against a lot of decks, it's just devastating. Being able to kill a Land of War Elves turn one is pretty good. And with Ephemerate, it can very easily be minus two, minus two as well, which is even better, especially when you take combat into play, because usually this is not instant speed. You know, Fourth Bridge Prowler is, it doesn't have flash or anything, but with Ephemerate, we can actually put this minus one, minus one on our opponent's creature at instant speed, you know, make them lose a combat they wouldn't have lost. So just a couple Fourth Bridge Prowlers, but also another benefit of Ephemerate is it allows us to save our creatures. So if our opponent goes to remove our Knight of the Even Legion, which is pretty much a card you need to kill, and it's a really great uh, black one drop for us, uh, if our opponent goes to kill it, we can just Ephemerate it in response. So um, it's a great way to interact with our opponent and also get a ton of value, which just makes it a very powerful card. But that's not all we're doing with our deck. It's not just a blink deck. We're we're also taking advantage of the fact that we're almost mono black. Ephemerate is the only non black card in, uh, in all of our deck, and you know, including our sideboard. Everything else is black, but Ephemerate's our one white card that we're splashing for. Um, and because we have so many uh, black cards in our deck, Grey Merchant of Asphodel is just a really good way to finish out the game. 
Uh, a common problem I've seen with other Ephemerate decks uh, built around the card in the historic format is they don't really gr have great finishers. You know, they kind of do a good job of kind of churning through their deck uh, and putting a, putting together a board, but a lot of times, even when you do that, your opponent's just sitting there like, well, you can't really kill me. You have a bunch of 1-1s one and you've drawn a bunch of cards, but I'll just Wrath eventually and then I'll kind of undo all your work. And so Great Merchant of Asphodel is a really great way to sort of uh, kind of just put the, you know, put the hammer down uh, and just kill our opponent on the spot. And it's a great target for Ephemerate. If we go like turn six, play Grey Merchant, drain our opponent for like six or seven life, Ephemerate it, drain our opponent for six or seven life again, most of the time it's just gonna kill our opponent. So um, yeah, it's just a really great Ephemerate target and a really great finisher in our mono black strategy. So even you know separately, these two cards are very good in our deck, but together they're a really great way to finish out the deck. So in that same vein of the mono black devotion thing, we also have a Yara, Verse of Locked Wayne. So she is a 3 mana 2 3, and whenever she or another black creature enters the battlefield, so again, really great with blink effects, but whenever she or another creature enters the battlefield, we get to drain our opponent for one, and then we can sacrifice another black creature to draw a card. So, you know, this is just really great. It means that a card like Dusk Legion Zealot isn't actually costing us life. You know, we have a Yara out, we play Dusk Legion Zealot, he drains us for one life, but then we drain one life from our, from our opponent, so we go back up to our same life total while our opponent's losing life. So, it's a good way to kind of regain some of the life that we're losing uh, with our card draw. And also, she is just great with Callous Blood Mage. The pest that uh, Callous Blood Mage makes is a black creature as well. It's black and green. So if we have a Yara out and we play the Callous Blood Mage, we can choose the pest option, make a pest token, and each of those is going to drain our opponent. The, the Blood Mage itself and the pest are both going to trigger a Yara, drain our opponent for two, and then we can sacrifice that pest with the Yara, because it is a black creature, to draw a card. So these two go extremely well together, and she just kind of like turns our blinking strategy into not just a value engine, but a way to kind of kill our opponent too. And she has three black devotion. You know, she has triple black as her mana cost. So really good with Grey Merchant of Asphodel. Just these two together on the battlefield are going to equal six life drain because Grey Merchant enters the battlefield, drains for five because he has two and she has three. And then she's going to train for one because a black creature entered the battlefield, which is Grey Merchant. So, um... This is sort of the, the idea of our deck, right? We're a mono-black devotion deck that also wants to be blinking all of our stuff. It just turns out that a lot of the good mono-black devotion pieces uh, that are creatures uh, are pretty good to blink. And so outside of all that, we just have some stuff to let us interact with our opponent because the format is in a pretty... Um, <laughs> A pretty unique place right now where you kind of just need to interact or you're going to get run over by some crazy bullcrap. Uh, so we kind of have a removal package here. I talked about the fourth uh, bridge prowl. We got a couple of those which is you know kind of selectively good against some decks. Sometimes we'll sideboard it out. Um, we also have two fatal pushes. Fatal push is really great in our deck because we can really easily trigger revolt with uh, ephemerate and other abilities. We have like a Yara sacrificing something can trigger revolt. So fatal push we can trigger pretty uh, easily here. And then we also have Blood Chief Thirst to go after basically bigger targets than Fatal Push. There's actually a decent amount of Planeswalkers and stuff that Blood Chief Thirst allows us to, to, to deal with. And the reason we're running sort of a split of removal here is because we do have a lot of card draw between Dusk Legion Zealot, between Callus Blood Mage, Ayara. Uh, we just have a lot of ways to kind of churn through our deck while we're ephemerating things. And so having access to multiple different removal spells means that we're more likely if there's just, like if our opponent has a 5 CMC creature, Fatal Push is not going to do the job. If they have an Elder Gargaroth, we don't want a Fatal Push, we want a Blood Chief's Thirst. So having a way to kind of dig through our deck and find these cards which are mostly okay um, on their own, but sometimes we just need one in particular, uh, we'll be really happy about that. And then finally, we've got Knight of the Even Legion. Again, just a fantastic uh, one black devotion, one one black mana, but just does so much for a one drop. And finally, four copies of Thought Seize, which used to be the best card in the format. I don't think it is anymore. Now there's all sorts of crazy mystical archives running around that uh, it's got some competitions, but uh, it is still a very, very powerful card. Um, and so this just gives us a lot of one mana ways to interact, which you just kind of need right now in the format. Looking at our sideboard, we have... First off, I really hate this new sideboard structure. Like, this is super ugly. Uh, it used to be way easier to read. But anyway, um, so we got a couple copies of Fatal Push. Like I said, Fatal Push is fantastic in our deck um, because we can turn on Revolt so easily. So we, you know, it's already one of the best uh, anti-aggro cards in the format, but 
when we when it's good, we can bring in these two copies, maybe side out the two Blood Chiefs Thirst or side out the two uh, Fourth Bridge Prowlers if those don't make sense. So having access to a full four copies of Fatal Push is nice. Grafdigger's Cage against like goblins, anything doing stuff out of the graveyard is pretty nice. Uh, Gifted Etherborn, we have four copies of that. Very, very good against any sort of aggressive deck. And, you know, Burn is one of the better decks in the format right now. There's just, uh, they got Lightning Helix and a lot of other good cards out of Strixhaven. So having uh, Gifted Aetherborn to side in, we are a little bit weak with all the, you know, we're draining ourselves for life to draw cards with Callous Blood Mage and Dusk Legion Zealot. So having a way to actually gain life back is pretty nice. Kite Sail Freebooter is good against control decks. Timoret Chosen from Death is a... One, it's two black pips towards our devotion, which is nice. And two, it's a way for us to hate on our opponent's graveyard. Like I said, we do have some main deck graveyard hate with Callous Blood Mage, but having some out of our sideboard too is really nice. And then some Murderous Riders, if there's just a deck where we just need to be able to answer something and our other removal spells aren't really doing it, Murderous Rider kind of doubles as removal and it's a creature we can play to uh, to up our devotion. Uh, and finally, the one card I forgot to talk about in the main deck is Agatheme's Awakening. So just basically, we're only running 22 lands lands here, and the way we get away with that is we have two copies of Agatheem's Awakening, so uh, oftentimes we're going to just play this as a land, but uh, it's also sometimes just going to allow us to win the game. We have creatures at all CMCs, uh, you know, if we if we get lucky and get all the way up to eight mana if a game's going long, we can pay this for five, get back a Grey Merchant, a Gaunti, and a Yara, uh, a Yerix Finlurker, and a Knight of the Even Legion, and just kill our opponent, just massively drain them out on the spot. But even outside of that, it helps us kind of stay in the game against, like, a Wrath or whatever. We can reanimate two or three creatures and kind of undo a Wrath, so... Uh, yeah, in our mana base, we got Castle Octwain, which is just fantastic in this deck, allows us to keep churning through our deck, so we never really run out of gas. We have a bunch of uh, mostly painless white splashing. We have, you know, uh, a Grim, Grim Climb Pathway, which we can always just set to black if you already have a white source. We typically only need one white source, so once we have uh, white on the battlefield, we can just always choose black for this, and it's basically a swamp. Uh, we have uh, Godless Shrine, which again, can always come to play on tap. And Concealed Courtyard is a little bit painful. It is most of the time going to come into play untapped, but if we're in the late game, it will come into play tapped. But uh, it does give us pretty easy access to white most of the time. So these lands are how we're able to, you know, pay costs like triple black, double black, and also have ephemerate in our deck. So uh, anyway, that's that basically covers the whole deck. Just a mono black ephemerate deck. You know, mono black in quotation marks because ephemerate is not, not black, obviously. But uh, I found the deck to be pretty good, so let's hop right into the games. Uh, here we go. Game one. All right, here we are playing against Tavigo. We'll go first, and yeah, it looks good to me. Turn one, Thoughtseize is hard to beat. Got our Ephemerate with our Dusk Legion Zealot, Gaunti to be a pseudo finisher. We uh, we kind of you know we only got the two uh, the two um, Garys to kind of finish thing things off main deck. Otherwise, we're just kind of beating down with little dorks and hoping to get there. But Gary allows us to steal our opponent's finishers. All right, so our opponent, huh? What is we know what they're doing. There's Solemnity locking us, but do we want to take the Adilic Tutor or the Solemnity? The problem is if we take the Solemnity and they draw their other piece, they can just go get another copy of Solemnity. But this does add three mana to whatever they go. You know what? We're going to take the Idyllic Tutor. I think... I think this is better because this time... You know, they may just not find the other combo piece. Nine lives is what they're looking for. Um, and if they just don't find that other combo piece, Solemnity doesn't do a lot. We're not. In, this is not the, <laughs> the best deck for us, though, because um, I guess nine lives only prevents damage, though. We can drain our opponent out with Garys, so we actually have a way to win through nine lives, although it will be quite slow, blinking Garys and hoping they can't disrupt us, but it's something. Um, yeah, we'll go play this on black. Play Yerix Fenlurker. Snipe something out of our opponent's hand. We're probably just going to ephemerate this... Because we already have action in our hand, probably just going to ephemerate this uh, Fenlurker to snipe a few cards out of our opponent's hand. Seems fine. We'll see what they go with here. Maybe just a land. They do need to hit their land drop, so they might be thinking, ah, if I top deck a land, I should go with a land, but... <laughs> oh? Oh, they got rid of the... Settle the wreckage. Interesting. Maybe that means they drew another Wrath. So Ephemerate doesn't save against Wraths. It does save pretty well against regular removal spells, but... Okay, Mind Stone. We don't care about Mind Stone. Mind Stone plus the Solemnity... Oh, they're just gonna... Okay, they're trying to find the other combo piece. 
I guess, is the idea. Alright, we're just going to keep sniping stuff out of our opponent's hand. So this is pretty powerful. Ephemerate is going to effectively be, make, you know, make them discard two cards for one mana. Very good. And not only do they go, they don't go to the graveyard. Yerix Finlurker just exiles them forever. So we're really going to be sniping our opponent's hand here. A really cool trick you can do with the Yerix Finlurker as well is if our opponent has zero cards in hand, we can wait till their upkeep. Uh, they draw a card on their draw step, and then we cast Ephemerate before they get a chance to go to their main phase. And then we can Ephemerate our Fenlurker and just snipe that card out of their hand before they have a chance to cast it. So unless it's an instant, it's just gone. Uh, we just kind of eat our opponent's draw step. Oh, they... They had the nine lives, and they just didn't cast it. Well, that's kind of... Do they have... Huh. So they exile both of their combo pieces here. Pretty weird. Okay. Well, we're going to see what's going on in our opponent's deck. I don't know if there's much we can grab here. Yeah, I mean, none of this really helps us. This just helps our opponent, because it still uh, helps their... Still helps their nine lives not get counters on it. But we'll see. Let's see if our opponent wraths us. I imagine that's what's coming. Okay, our opponent... I guess they just figured the lock wasn't going to do it here. They're right, because we do have Gary to get to the lock, but... I don't know what they're digging for instead. Like, what is the game plan without the lock? Well, okay. We'll go to combat. Attack with the lads. Um, probably should have played this Dutch Lead and Zealot beforehand. Because if we draw nothing off this guy, we could we could have pumped our, our Fen Lurker for one there, but it's okay. Play the Dutch Lead and Zealot. Draw a card. Oh, we would have drawn something anyway. So what do we want to do? Yeah, we'll just draw a card. We kind of wanted to make a, t a pest token here, but I'm afraid of a wrath. A wrath is their best move at this point, so I'd rather just make all of our threats, you know, two for ones. This just replaces itself. So if they wrath here, we didn't lose a card by playing out another creature, and we've kind of forced them into the wrath. So we'll see what they do. If they just pass, we gotta assume they have settle the wreckage, leyline of sanctity. Interesting. Um, so we're going to go play land, and we're going to draw a card before we do anything here. Okay, wow, we are flooding out pretty bad. Alright, we'll just hit our opponent. Authority of the Councils, which might matter. I mean, if they try to play a blocker here, it shuts that down. I don't know if they even run any creatures in their deck, though. <laughs> Alright, there's the, there's the Wrath we were expecting. Yeah, 4th Bridge Prowler's not doing a lot here, but we will play it out. We'll play... Decline. We'll play... This. Draw a card. Lose two life. Oh, Agadim's Awakening's really good. So, we can do it right now for one, two, three, four. We can do it for five, even. Okay, Immortal Sun, sure. But we're just gonna fire off this Agadim's Awakening for four, right? Yeah, I guess we don't have a one drop to get back, which kind of sucks, but that's okay. We're gonna go... One, two, three, four. Get back a. F do they have anything in hand? They do. Fin Lurker, Gonti, and Blood Mage. Get it all back. We're we're actually gonna make the Pest Token to pressure our opponent's life total at this point. What happened to our Gonti trigger? Did I? Did I miss? Oh, we can't target our opponent. That's right. Well, that kind of sucks. All right. <laughs> so it turns out Leyline is pretty good against us. I was thinking it only really shut down our Thought Seizes, but that was pretty good. It, it shuts off our Gontis, too. And I guess our Fen Lurkers. No, our Fen Lurkers work on all opponents, yeah. So, just Gonti. All right. Well, do you have another Wrath? That's kind of what you need. Hmm. Okay. I was going to say they might have Settle the Wreckage, but we're going to go for it anyway. But they didn't even have some of the so it's okay. Alright, so our opponent is on lockdown, <laughs> which is a little... Like I said, we have we have a way to win through the lockdown. So it's it's not the end of the world, but we're going to go up to Freebooters. Do we want to just put the pressure on our opponent with the Gifted Aetherborns? No, I don't think so. Yeah, I think we just go up to Freebooters, and that's it. Graftigger's Cage doesn't do anything. 
murderous right yeah none of this is really helpful so we'll just go up the freebooters to try to snipe some rats out of our opponent's hand and what is not great I guess Gonti is pretty bad against this deck because we're just gonna see a bunch of rats and lock pieces so we just won't we won't play the Gontis and we'll go yeah we'll just run it like that Gonti is usually pretty good against control decks you know being able to snipe Narsets and and you know those kinds of things out of our opponent's deck even counter spells to protect our board it's pretty nice but I guess this kind of control deck in particular seems pretty pretty terrible. Okay, we're, we're happy with this hand. We get to go Thought Seize into Fen Lurker into Yara. Pretty nice. Ooh. Um. We're still gonna Thought Seize. We don't want them to establish their lock if we can prevent it. So let's let's Thought Seize our opponent. If we draw another one drop next turn, we'll probably go knight plus one drop rather than uh, run out the fin lurker because we would like to get this knight down. Okay, so nine lives is better than solemnity. Yeah, we're gonna take the nine lives. We'd rather them just have the solemnity and not the nine lives. Doomscar, of course, is a is a problem, but we can we can handle being wrath thanks to this Agadim's awakening. We might have to play this as a land though, depending on how things go here. That's okay. Opponent's got another cycling land in hand. I think they're thinking if they want to cycle now or not. Ooh. We're actually going to hold... Uh, do we do Maybe we play the Freebooter and force them to... Yeah, you know what? We're going to Freebooter and steal the... Probably steal the Doomscar, because the fact that Freebooter dying is going gonna, is gonna to make stealing the Solemnity pointless anyway. So might as well steal the way that they kill our freebooter. Hopefully our opponent, even with our Gary plan allowing us to, to win through their lock, we really would prefer to get in some damage before our opponent locks things down. Oh my god. Wow, do we just have to take the nine lives? Yeah, there's no good way to go about this, is there? I guess we take the nine lives. Brutal. We really need to draw another Thought Seize now. If we can draw a Thought Seize and snipe this Dooms... I guess we can't even snipe it out of our opponent's hand, can we? Because they're going to foretell it. Yeah, this is not... We needed them not to draw two copies of of uh, nine lives in the top ten cards of their deck, but they did do so. Yeah, that was not the Thought Seize we needed. All right, we'll attack. And we are going to just go pay three life, play a Yara... Imagine our opponent just foretells this guy this turn. Sets themselves up to Wrath next turn. Which is fine. Oh, okay, just double Solemnity. Ah, we really want to draw. Oh, we get to snipe we get to snipe the Doomscar out of their hand. Oh <laughs> Oh my gosh, I was gonna say we might need to sack something main phase to Iara just to <laughs> They drew all combo pieces. <laughs> They drew, like, all Solemnities and Nine Lives, but we get to snipe the other hand. All right. And now we're going to just put the pedal to the metal here, try to hurt our opponent as much as possible. They're they're going to find a Wrath here soon, so we need to just do as much damage as we can before that. Um, yeah, we'll play Knight of the Even Legion. We will play this on white, and we will pump the Yarrick's Fen Lurker. We're not even going to play this other Yarrick. We'll save that in case they try to hold something in hand, but we've got our opponent dead here. Well, I guess we don't get a counter from Solemnity, but that's okay. So do you have a Wrath? Did they draw a Wrath this exact turn? Because that's what they need. Yes! Okay. All right, well, we took down a, a lock deck, which usually usually Black has some trouble dealing with enchantments, right? You know, maybe we should have the... Uh, I forget what the card's called, but it's two Black... A two mana black spell that allows you to destroy an enchantment. Really, black should not be able to do that, but it does exist. Um, so you might want to consider putting those in your sideboard. I just hadn't really seen the Solemnity Lock deck since uh, since Historic has gone through this seismic up upheaval, you know. But it seems like somebody's still playing it at least. So uh, we were able to beat it anyway, just by disruption, just by thought seizing our opponent and sniping the cards out of their hand with the Fen Lurkers. Uh, and the kite sail freebooter, so it was it was pretty scary. I think I think honestly, I think honestly, our opponent should have just foretold the doomscar, knowing that we're running thought seizes and, and freebooters and stuff. 
it was pretty risky to just leave it in their hand when they could have foretold it away, um, and we wouldn't have been able to touch it with our discard. That would have at least bought them some more time. Um, like I said, though, we we really just wanted to get our opponent down to like 10 life, because if we can get them down to 10 life, then draining them out with Gary becomes a lot easier, even if they do establish the lock. So Solemnity plus 9 lives would just mean we can't deal damage to them. But 9 lives, like it says here, if a source would deal damage to you, prevent that damage. So it doesn't count life loss, which is what Gary is. So we could drain our opponent out, but getting them down to a low life total before they establish that lock would, would be pretty key. But it just turns out we just disrupted them enough that they couldn't even get the lock going. So sweet. All right. Mono Black Devotion <laughs> Ephemerate. Uh, looking pretty good here. All right. On to the next one. All right. Up against Jot240, and he's a Lurus deck. We'll keep this, but Lurus is pretty... makes me think burn? Red, white, burn? Yeah. Red, white, burn. This is probably one of the most preeminent decks to come out of the whole Strixhaven thing. Thoughtseize is really painful here, but we're going to do it. Oh, this is a different version. Uh, we'll take God's Willing, I guess. Gird for Battle is painful, but God's Willing actually saves their creature. So if we draw some removal, we can at least deal with the with the creature. Although they're just going to beat the crap out of us with this Soul Scar Mage. So I would really like to just draw a removal spell off the top here be the best possible scenario. Did they draw a God's Willing? The fact that they didn't play this Gird for Battle makes me think they drew a, a God's Willing. So we'll play this on black. Dusk Legion, Legion Zealot, draw a card. Still no removal spell. I don't think we're going to draw, uh, block this turn. I think we're going to block and then ephemerate next turn. Uh, will be the plan. wonder why they didn't play the Gird for Battle. I guess they want the two plus one plus one counters. They didn't just want to bump it once. I yeah, really just need to draw interaction here, though. No blocks. Oof. Yeah, it's getting big. Alright, well, we're down to nine. We can block and then ephemerate next turn, though. Gosh, we need to stop drawing lands. Um, yeah. Enter's tapped. Pass turn. No attacks. Next turn, at least, we can play this Gaunti, which has Death Touch, so it doesn't matter how much they pump this Soul Scar Mage. They need to have removal for Arganti. Okay, Dreadhorde Arcan, this is not good for us. We we have got to find a removal spell. We've got a lot of removal in our deck, but we have just managed to find absolutely 0% of it. <laughs> got a whole removal package. I think six cards or so. Yeah. Arcanist was probably the best thing they could have drawn here, unfortunately. For us. But... We do get we get three redraws here with this Dusk Legion Zealot blink. We get to blink this, draw a card, blink it again on our upkeep, draw a card, and then our natural draw a card for the turn. So that's three chances to find some removal here. Let's see if we find any. We're getting to the point where we're going to just... Okay, Fatal Push is good, and we have Revolt. Not that it matters, but... Okay, here... Oh, I guess we just Fatal Push the Arcanist. Yeah. Fatal Push the Arcanist. Um... Play Knight of the Even Legion. And play this Godless Shrine tapped. Plan on just chumping with this Dusk Legion Zealot. Opponent will probably just get the, the Lurus out of their side or out of their uh yeah, out of their sideboard. Here comes the Lurus to recast the Arcanist. So discard would be really good here. Ah. Any way we can draw cards this turn? No. Okay. We're just gonna go. We don't need a Gary. What have we got in our graveyard? Just, just Dusk Legion Zealot. All right, we're gonna go Gaunti. See if we can find a one mana spell. They have a ton of them in their deck. Defiant Strike, Clever Lumamancer. So this isn't quite Red White Burn. This is like a Red White Feather deck, I guess. I guess we play Defiant Strike and no attacks. They're going to be able to, if they draw a land here, they can play Lurus and recast the Arcanist immediately, which sucks. But, uh, it is what it is. Alright, well, we'll trade. Yeah, 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 opponent plays Lurus and gets it back, but we gotta do what we gotta do. That at least gets the plus one, plus one counters off of it. Alright. Draw a card. Removal. 
Ah, if we had a blink, that would be good removal, but we don't. What do we need to do here? We can Agadim's Awakening for three, which isn't very good. We can play Grey Merchant to gain three life and have a good blocker. And Oska, hmm. We can Dusk Legion Zealot and hope we find removal, but we're pretty bad off if we don't. Alright, we're going to Dusk Legion Zealot. We have a backup case of pumping this Knight of the Egypt Legion. Legion. Alright, that's not what we wanted to see. So we'll play this tapped. Pass turn. No attacks. Yeah, that's... We were hoping to find a removal spell for this Luris, but could not could not find it. Even Ephemerate would have worked, because we could play the Prowler, Ephemerate the Prowler, kill the Luris, but we needed to draw... Alright, well, opponent probably just going to kill us here. Let's see, that's four. Pretty sure we just did, but we'll go like this. Activate. I guess we just take four, but still not good. We're down to two now. They get to recast their Arcanist. We just have somehow managed to find zero removal. Ugh, we can Grey Merchant to gain some life here. We could also Agadim's Awakening for four. Alright, what we're going to do is Yerik's Friend Lurker. Snipe the last card out of their hand. Hope. Nah, it wasn't really a good thing. But then we're going to Grey Merchant. Grey Merchant gives us pretty good blocks here. No attack. So, they do get to unfortunately attack in with the Shredheart Arcanist and... Oh, that's a really good draw. That's a ridiculously good draw. Eek. This might leave us dead. Because the Dreadhorde Dread Arcanist is going to be able to pull something out of the graveyard here. Let's see what they get, though. I imagine it's just going to be like God's willing to make the Dreadhorde Arcanist unblockable, maybe? Okay, sure, that's fine, too. We can at least block this pretty well. So, okay. We can block... Block and block. block. We can block the Dreadar Arcanist with everything and take four. And we'll end up losing our Knight of the Even Legion. Otherwise... We can block the Soul Scar Mage. And yeah, I think we do this. They can just recast... I mean, the, it, but they recast the Arcanist next turn. It doesn't have haste. Which is pretty important. I guess Agadim's Awakening allows us to get back Grey Merchant next turn. So we could also want to trade the Grey Merchant with this Dual Scar Mage. Okay. I think we're just going to kill the Dread Horror Arcanist. Lose our Knight of the Even Legion. I think that's what we got to do here. They do get to recast it out of their graveyard next turn, but it does mean that unless they top deck a spell, they don't have anything to... Okay, Fourth Breeze Prowler is really good. So we get to go Fourth Bridge Prowler, hit the Luris, Fourth Bridge Prowler, hit the Luris, and we get to, we're going to do a little mini Agadim's Awakening for two here, get back Knight, get back Dusk Legion Zealot, go down to two, hopefully they're not playing any shocks. <laughs> Castle Lockthwain sets us up for next turn, and um, I guess we attack. Pass turn. Alright, now we're just praying they don't draw a really good spell off the top. We should be able to chump our way through just about anything. I think maybe Invigorated Rampage would be the best thing they could draw here to give their stuff trample. But most other things, it's not going to be a big deal. Maybe we shouldn't have attacked with that Gary, actually. Because it does... We actually want this Gary in the graveyard. Yeah, that was a mistake. Because we want to block and for them to pump and to put our Gary into the graveyard. So we shouldn't have attacked there. Hopefully that doesn't end up losing us the game. But that was definitely a misplay. Gary should have been left back on defense. Okay, they didn't attack anyway. So... Ugh. Well, I guess we just fire it off. We would have liked to get this Gary in the graveyard, but I don't think we can sit around and do nothing. 
So one, two, three, four. I guess we can attack first. Hmm. We'll go attack, attack, and attack. See what our opponent does. Okay, so we can one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Okay, so we can't pump our knight. But we do get to go one, two, three, four. Get back Prowler, get back Finlurker, get back Gaunty. We get to Prowler to snipe our opponent's Soul Scar Mage. We get to Fenlurker, take the last card out of their hand, and we get to Gaunti, hopefully find some removal. Arcanist, it's kind of interesting. We'll take the God's Willing, though. Not quite removal, but kind of breaks one of our opponent's removal spells, at least. And now we're at the point where Grey Merchant is just going to destroy our opponent if we can ever find an Ephemerate. Um, I guess we'll do it. God's Willing on red. We want the Scry anyway, because we're looking for that we're looking for that ephemerate. We wants it. We wants it. <laughs> and having this thing be um, an indestructible or, you know, protection from red uh, death-touching blocker is pretty good. Okay, our opponent just scoops it up. We were at the point where ephemerate was going to drain our opponent for 10, gain us 10 life, and just put the game way out of reach. But we didn't even need it, I guess. Um, so our opponent, get to eat the born, seems really good against what they're doing. Because they, their, their whole idea is just to pump their creatures a ton. So having Gifted Aetherborn just means that all that pumping doesn't matter. It's going to be able to trade no matter what. Fatal Push looks fantastic. Um, the scariest thing, I guess, would be Feather. Which Fatal Push can't hit on its basic mode. Although, again, we're pretty good at turning on Revolt. Um, I don't think we want Freebooter. Timurit to snipe the graveyard might be okay. And it would be a decent enough blocker, too. Graft Digger's Cage... We, we can make it so they could cast spells from their graveyard, which would mess up Dreadhorde Arcanist, but that's like the only card that cares about that. Um, I think we'd rather just go Timuret, go down maybe a couple Gaunties, maybe... Man, we got to cut six cards. I guess Blood Chief's Thirst is a little bit worse. Fourth Bridge Prowler isn't fantastic. Um... You know what, maybe we keep the Blood Sheath Thirst, actually. I'm, I'm okay with that. And since we're going down some of our Blink Targets, maybe we go down, like, one Ephemerate, and... Uh, ch -ch -ch, man, still pretty difficult. What should we do here? Um, Maybe one Timurit's fine. And... Cut... Eh, maybe go down all the Gaunties. I guess they don't have great stuff for us to steal. And finally, we'll go down, I guess, one of the Fenlurkers and run it like that. Alright. Game 2 against Jot240. So, game 1 went pretty well. We just kind of controlled our opponent out of the game, which is a great thing about our deck. We kind of got a little dork plan going so we can be aggressive, but also, we can just kind of interact a lot with what we're doing. So, we can play the control role pretty well, too. Having this Callus uh, Blood Mage to go after our opponent's graveyard here is pretty nice. So we're going to Thought Seize. Prime targets are Dreadheart Arcanist, and that's the only creature they got. So <laughs> we're going to say Dreadheart Arcanist, or if they don't got that, any other creature they have to put these pump spells on. But turns out they had the perfect target. Concealed Courtyard, Yerex Finlurker, start eating away at their hand. Next turn we'll probably just... Probably just Callous Blood Mage and draw a card. There's some temptation to just hit the graveyard, just get this Arcanist out of there, so they can't lure us it back later. But I think we've got some time, and hopefully we'll find like a hopefully we'll find like a Timurit to eat away at their graveyard without having to use up our whole charm here to do it. All right. Um. Yeah, we're gonna go. Hmm. Yeah, we're gonna go to combat attack. Callous Blood Mage, draw a card. Okay. The problem here is if our opponent has another land. If they don't, we're okay. They don't. Okay, so that means they can't... They didn't want to play the Lurus into... If they have this God's Willing to protect it, they definitely would have played it, but they didn't have the, the fourth land. So we're going to go... 
play this. Attack our opponent. Draw a card. Opponent's thinking about if they want a God's willing our creature. <laughs> huh. Yeah, we'll just we'll just spin lurker. We'll just be man efficient here. Kinda was thinking we should just do knight there to put the pressure on as much as we could, but I think we're okay just uh saving that for a turn. Next turn we can maybe like Blood Chief's Thirst with Kicker and also play Knight um, for five mana, so it seems like we want to be mana efficient here. Sure. And this does eat away at the resources. I mean, even if they do get back their Arcanist here, we are kind of, uh... Wow! Okay, they just scoop it up. Yeah, they. I mean, we did have them in a rough spot. We showed game one that we we had a ton of removal, right? And so they just really did not want to play that Luris. Uh, rightfully so, because it was just going to get Blood Chief's Thirst. They were desperately hoping to draw a land off the top, an untapped land even. Inspiring Bandage wouldn't have done it. Uh, but they wanted an untapped land off the top so they could play their Luris, leave up God's Willing, um, and then get it, be able to get their Dread Horde Arcanist back. But they were getting to the point where we were building up such a board state, and we had this Knight coming, which they didn't even know about, but we were building up such a board state that it was going to be difficult even even when they, they basically had to skip a couple turns here. Um, and so even even if they could kind of get their ideal set up here, it was still not going to be great for them. So they just scooped it up. So sweet. I'm, I'm liking this mono black, <laughs> mono black devotion blink deck. Um, yeah, just kind of tore apart this deck piece by piece and kind of shows the power of what we're doing that we have basically all these threats that double as interaction, double as card draw, um, and then just actual interaction too, so we can just sort of keep the pressure on our opponent as we're interacting with them. And that's pretty much my, I think this is kind of like my favorite kind of deck. Uh, decks like this, deck like, decks like fairies, decks like uh, modern humans, where you have a proactive game plan and you're also uh, interacting with your opponent. It kind of drives me crazy to have a proactive game plan that doesn't have any interaction. You're just like, okay, well, hopefully I win faster than my opponent does. That kind of drives me insane sometimes because they'll just have like this one thing I can't deal with and I'm like, oh, I wish I had any removal in my deck. But this is a uh, this is sort of the best of both worlds to me. We get to have our, our blank game plan, draw a bunch of cards, and meanwhile we're just uh, tearing apart our opponent's resources with our Fen Lurkers and our removal spells and such. So, sweet. Yeah. Really just uh, kind of destroyed this. I'm thinking it's, even though we never saw Feather, I'm thinking it's a red-white Feather deck. So we just kind of, no, I guess they, no, they're running Lurus. So they're like a Dreadheart Arcanist only. <laughs> That's their Feather. But anyway, anyway, uh, we tore them apart. So sweet. All right, on to the next one. Okay, up against Jillian versus the M, and we'll play first here. We'll keep this. This is a really sketchy hand, though. Maybe we should have mulliganed, but we do have some interaction with this Fatal Push. Okay, we will go Swamp. Hope our opponent's playing something where Fatal Push is good. Well, that's devastating. <laughs> Okay, well, our opponent's on the... If you're running Inquisition of Kozilek, that means you're running four copies of, of uh, Thoughtseize. So that's probably their game plan here, is just make us discard. Well, okay, Dusk and Zilla was one of the better draws in our deck for sure. Okay, we'd really like the White Source now. That would be the best possible draw to get these Ephemerates going. Or, you know, some, if our opponent plays something we can Fatal Push, that'd be good, too. Maybe, hmm. Baron Moor, huh? Maybe they're playing a Bullets of Citadel deck? I could, Baron Moor could be okay there. <laughs> yeah, our opponent, like I said, if you're playing Inquisition of Gauze, like that means you've already maxed out on copies of Thoughtseize. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was actually a mistake on my part. Definitely should have played this Agadim's Awakening last turn, knowing that they're on a discard deck. That was just a straight up me playing the game wrong. I shouldn't have played the Castle Lock Plane. Because uh, this is a thought seizable land. So. Definitely a mistake. Okay. Opponent might just be on, like, discard tribal. Well, that's a good draw. Attack opponent for one. And we're just going to be drawing cards with these Callous Blood Mages. I, don't, I really severely doubt. We are ever going to be choosing another another mode on those because we just if our opponent is playing like the the you know the what is it called chatterbones or the little skeleton kid 
Uh, if they're playing a deck like that, then we just have to... Yeah, they're playing Discard Tribal. We just gotta keep our hand full as much as we can. Oh, discard an Ephemerate, though. We don't got the white mana at the moment. Oh, well, now we do. Okay, so we will go... We could just Blood Chief Thirst it, but they probably have more than one, because they just skipped a bunch of turns. If we Ephemerate, we're doing nothing else, really. Let's see, we'll attack the Liliana. I think we're not gonna Blood Chief Thirst it. It's just, I feel like it's almost certain that they have... I'm almost certain that they have a uh, a second one in hand, so we'd rather make it a little bit more difficult on them. This is not going to work because we can ephemerate the Callus uh, Blood Mage, which actually fizzles their whole Murder Rider, which is pretty nice. We will draw a card. This gets fizzled, goes to their graveyard. We'll discard Castle Lockthwain. Our opponent's running out of resources here. They've had to discard their own hand. Okay, well. Hmm. Do we want to blink our creature just kill Ileana? She's at 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, okay. We'll, we'll still blink. We're greedy. <laughs> Liliana can stay out for one more turn. Dot Seize. Alright, that's a pretty good draw. Uh, again, I'm almost certain they have another Liliana in hand, so now I'll Dot Seize to confirm that. Okay, that was a Murder Shrider, so I was I was wrong. So do I want to just attack this thing? Yeah, I'm going to go Knight of the Even Legion, attack Liliana. I'm going to save this Blood Chief's Thirst for a threat we can't get off the battlefield by just attacking. So... We're gonna save. We're gonna just discard Castle Lockway in this turn and uh, keep both of our removal spells. Opponent can just play whatever they got here, though. So it is gonna be a one. Okay, so opponent gives it up. We're actually pretty well set up against this deck because they're just aiming to make us discard, and we're aiming to draw a bunch of cards. So <laughs> we kind of just naturally counter that. Um, anything that goes. I guess Fatal Push is a little mad. We do need to kill the Tiny Bones. That's what it's called, Tiny Bones. Um, Freebooter's pretty meh. Yeah, there's not much we can bring in here. We could maybe bring in the Gifted Aetherborn, but the goal is to keep drawing cards so we don't lose a lot of life to them, not to... Uh, I think we just run it back. I think we're just kind of naturally set up to be pretty good against what our opponent's doing. Because if we, if we... If we're at the point where we need to gain life with a with the Aetherborn, then we probably are already going to lose the game, because our opponent has successfully kind of annihilated our hands and is just draining us out based on that, so I think rather than bring in the, the one-for-ones, like the, the the Aetherborn, which can gain us some life and be an efficient attacker, I'd rather just keep our two-for-ones to kind of disrupt what our opponent's doing naturally. I don't know what our opponent's doing. I'm thinking really hard about if they want to go first or not. I guess maybe it is sort of a question with the deck they're running in a deck we're running. Maybe they want to go second to not give us the extra card draw. Maybe they're just going to time out. <laughs> Maybe I'm putting more thought into it and they've just sort of left their computer and are hoping I'll just leave. But, okay. Well, we'll keep this, sure. Yeah, might have our, our opponent might have just kicked over their computer and left. <laughs> I was thinking maybe they were thinking long and hard about, oh, do I want to go first? Should I should I deny them the extra draw from going second? Uh, yeah. But maybe maybe after l the last game they just said, you know what? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna minimize Reina and hope my opponent quits so I get some some free rank. <laughs> Otherwise, I don't want to play this matchup anymore. That's fine too. Or to be to be fair to our opponent, maybe their computer their internet went out or something. So could be anything. Pretty sure they just got mad though. All right, well our opponent timed out, so yeah, they just they just did the old uh, throw my computer out a window <laughs> scenario. But that's okay. We I would have liked to see how our our deck matched up against that in subsequent games, but uh, yeah, no luck. All right, on to the next one. All right, up against E Dino Rock, 
and okay, we'll keep this. Definitely not the best hand for sure. Uh, we got nothing to do until turn three potentially. If our opponent is on something where fatal push matters, this is definitely a much better hand. Like if we can go concealed courtyard, fatal push their thing, turn three, callous blood mage, and then start blinking it from there, sure. But uh, if if they're on something where fatal push doesn't matter, we've got stone cold nothing to do until turn three. The positive thing is we are on the play, so it not having a turn until uh, not having a play until turn three is a lot less damaging if you're if you're on the play, you know, so your opponent is on their turn two while you play your, your three drop. The other way around though is, is so brutal. If you're if you're playing your three drop and your opponent's playing their turn four. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Fatal push. Uh. <laughs> Alright. Oh yeah. We didn't want to see that though. Okay, okay. Well if our opponent goes uh the problem with this gruel deck um is pretty much just the, what is the card called? I'm sure they're gonna have it here. The Gruel, two drop. Okay, no. There's that two drop that makes two mana when it comes down. And good God, do I hate that card. All right, we're actually gonna go. Yorick's Fen Lurker. Yeah, Yorick's Fen Lurker. I did that a little poorly. I should have played the Swamp first, so that we wouldn't have to play this uh, Bright Climb pathway on white. We only really need one white source. So once we have, you know, our concealed courtyard down. We really want to just play this on black every time, so I kind of messed up there by not playing Swamp, uh, so we could just use this for the blink, but we're, it's not as disaster, at least. I, I still can blink. And blink I shall. So, Ephemerate. Take a card out of my opponent's hand. And we'll see if they're able to deploy everything out of their hand next turn. If they're not able to just use up their entire hand here, then we get to snipe the last card out too. Definitely not going to block. No. Ooh, they're not able to. All right, that means we just we just freaking ate three cards out of their hand with this Sherex Fen Lurker. That is about as good as it gets. Oh, one of them was a collected company too. Okay, that's not what we wanted to see. So we're gonna go. Castle Lockthwain, Callous Blood Mage, draw a card. Alright, okay. That's something to, that's not a land, at least. <laughs> so we've done a good job at just eating our opponent's resources like crazy. Um, but we're going to need to actually also draw things to do as well. I think normally against this deck, this is a, a Gruul aggro deck, we would be making uh, the pest creature token with this thing a lot of the time, just because clogging up the board is valuable against them. Um, but here we definitely have to draw, we need to just hit action for sure. We do have this castle locked Wayne though, so even if we just keep hitting lands, we can kind of painfully draw cards, so it's something. Castle Lockthwain is a good card. Alright, opponent just scoops, or just passes the turn here. Well, we are going to attack with both. This does kind of get pwned by a Bone Crusher Giant. Because we're going to pump, well, I guess I don't even need to pump this Fenlurker. Yeah, we'll just make the trade, actually. I was going to say we're going to pump this Fenlurker, but if they just want to trade. Okay, sure. Draw a card. Okay, Knight of the Even Legion, pass the turn. All right, we've got a pretty good board set up here. Voltaic Brawler, all right. Ooh, Gray Merchant. So we'll attack with these two. If they block, we get to trade. If they don't, we uh, can just Gray Merchant them. I, they're not going to block the knight, but if they block the Yerrick Svenlurker, we can pump that trade, uh, get their get their threat off the battlefield, and also pump our knight to deal some damage. But if they just if they just take it, we're good with that too, because then we can just Gray Merchant drain them for six, get them to a pretty low life total. It's possible we should be running like f three copies of Gray Merchant. There's a lot of times we kind of find ourselves wanting it just to finish the game, like right. In this situation, if we hadn't drawn Grey Merchant, we'd be pretty far away from finishing this game. Um, 
So it, it does feel like we won it a lot of times, but it is pretty clunky too. Like, if we just want early interaction. Okay. Well, they just throw their creature to, the, to its death. Sure. Alright. Well, I mean, we would have liked to play this Grey Merchant, but we're not going to pass up three mana, destroy your creature, or draw a card, which is effectively what that was. Um, we didn't actually spend a card to kill their card. Alright, so they're going to make a 4-4 four four here. Let's see if they make the same decision again here. Attack. Will they just chump? I mean, we're fine to just play the Abyss game here. <laughs> just eat our opponent's creatures every single turn as they block and block and block. Um, and if they don't, again, we can drop this Grey Merchant and get them to a really low life total. I guess, arguably, if they don't block here, we should just go Pump Knight twice and just kill them with Grey Merchant next turn. That's actually probably what we'll do. I don't think there's any way that really goes wrong for us. Okay, no, they're just gonna... Oh, yeah, I think I think we're gonna do this. I don't really see how this goes poorly for us. We got them down to death by Grey Merchant, and uh, even if they have something... Burning Tree, this is the card whose name I couldn't remember. This card I don't think should be in the format. <laughs> Okay, no. This is just... It, we can't gain life. I thought it was we can't drain life for a second, but... Alright, let's just finish things off. And drain our opponent for six. They are dead ski. Alright. So our opponent is on Gruul Aggro. One of the top decks in the format pre-Strixhaven. Don't know if that's quite true anymore, but... We'll definitely go up Gifted Aetherborn. is really good against them. Fatal Push is pretty good. And... Maybe the Murder Striders. We'll think about that. Uh, go down. I do think I think Fourth Bridge Prowler is fine against them. I guess all it really hits is their Elf guy before they put a counter on it. Yeah, you know what? Maybe this isn't great against them. No, they play Land of War Elves too, right? So they've got eight targets for this thing. That's that's good enough. Um, we'll go down. Hmm. Maybe Gaunties not super great against them. Go down all three Gaunties. Go down. Uh, maybe no, we do want to have the thought seeds to go after their ember cleaves. Maybe we just do the fatal pushes. They probably do run gargaroths, but most of their threats can just be fatal pushed. We've got things like gifted etherborn to deal with the gargaroths, and maybe go down one. Maybe go down one gray merchant. Seems fine. I think we can just play the the control game here. I don't I don't know if we need Grey Merchant to finish things out. I think just blowing up our opponent's stuff will probably be good enough. So opponent's going first this time. Ugh. Yeah, we can't keep this. One more land would be fantastic, but we cannot keep. Okay, well, we probably don't need both the fourth bridge prowlers, so we'll put one down. But this should be able to snipe whatever their first play is, land war elves or that. That 1-1 uh, one, one elf that gains plus one plus one counters. Well, that's unfortunate. Um, I guess we get the get this out of the way. We're not going to run out the Prowler just for no value, but the fact that they played this tapped... I don't think this card is good enough for Historic, is my opinion. I think this is good enough for Standard, but I think uh, the fact that this comes into play tapped... I don't think the 3-3 three, three is really worth it in this format. Well, okay. Opponent's doing a whole lot of nothing, so... Get down our Aetherborn... Start attacking and gaining some life. Seems good. If we draw a white sword, we can go like Prowler, Blink Prowler, and kill something with two toughness. So, that's pretty good. They're going to have to play something here. See, like having these two tap lands, I can't imagine has made their life good. I imagine this has put them behind by at least a turn, if not two. Alright, there's the Spellbreaker. Let's see if they put a counter on it. They do. Fatal Push. Is there any way we can... Not yet. So I think we just go attack, see if they make the trade. They may not. I mean, they, they want to have creatures on board for things like Embercleave. 
So could be that they just don't want to make this trade. We're not going to sit back and try to block with this thing, though. We're going to get in there. I mean, we're going to lose four, but we're going to be gaining two, and they're going to be losing two. So all in all, it kind of works out. Okay. Yeah. We're going to play a Yara here. So now this is going to be the way we can turn on our Fatal Push. So next turn, we can go play Yarex Fenlurker, sack it immediately, and then Fatal Push, whatever they put onto the battlefield here. If they have removal for our Yara, that's not good. Oh, they have Collected Company, sure. So we're going to go Yarex Fenlurker. We can still do... This Concealed Courtyard's a little annoying. We can't really ephemerate this turn. It would have been fantastic to be able to. But we can still do our strategy here to Fatal Push something, even on their turn. We can do that whole thing at instant speed. Start attacking their hand with this Ephemerate. Okay, and pass turn. They collected company, no attacks. So I guess they probably won't have... If they're a, yeah, if they're a Coco build, they probably won't have stuff like Elder Gargaroth, I imagine. Probably the only non-hittable targets they're going to have is... I'm going to do it now because I fear the Ember Cleave. So I'd rather just kill this thing. This does leave us a little a little soft to a Gruul Spellbreaker uh, coming in hasty here. Where we could, I guess it has Trample, so it wouldn't have even done... Chumping it doesn't even matter anyway. But I wanted to get... If we didn't get that off the battlefield, they would have enough mana to... To kind of riggedy wreck us. Ooh. Nope. I didn't want to do that. Okay, now we get to the fourth bridge prowler, <laughs> prowler, eat their Llanowar elves, put them back on mana. Quite good. Sure. We can ephemerate it if they if they I imagine they have another collected company here. So if they put something into play with with one toughness here, we can ephemerate it. No attacks. Another Coco, sure. Oh yeah. Yeah, and we get to do this while it's on the stack. Ephemerator Force Bridge Prowler. Eat the Pelt Collector. Yep. Alright. Pelt Collector. Okay. Do they have a 3 drop with that to pump it up? Oh, that's even better than a 3 drop. Okay. Basically a zero drop. Well, okay. I mean, a Yara is not the best thing for us to ephemerate, but it is. I mean, by doing that, we can drain them for one, so probably worth it. Do I want to do it? It means I don't get to draw this turn. Nah, you know what? We just won't do it. That's fine. I'd rather draw this turn, so we'll go land, Grey Merchant. Drain them for five. They get to gain some life with this scavenging ooze. But we're still drawing cards. Doing our thing. And by sacking our creature there, we did also kill their bone crusher permanently. Um, the scariest thing they could have in hand is a is a uh, Ember Cleave. Ember Cleave is going to be tough for us to beat. But it's tough for most decks to beat. Ember Cleave is just not really a fair card. Um, it just makes combat irrelevant. It's weird because it's a equipment, and equipment is usually all about making combat relevant, but for Ember Cleave in particular, that's not the case. No decks. It just basically means that blocking is pointless. You just can never... It just invalidates stats, basically. <laughs> it just says, my creature is going to win this combat, no matter what. So if they attack him with everything here, we have to expect an Ember Cleave. Pretty much nothing else it can be. Okay, if they just attack him with the Scavenging Goose, that's different. So they are going to eat two creatures. Uh, you know what? We'll, we'll sacrifice this Grey Merchant. No, do, I mean, it would be a nice thing to ephemerate. No, we'll, we'll sacrifice. That's fine. We'll make them do it. We'll make them tap out here. Sh 
sure. Sack it, draw a card. Definitely would like to find some removal for this scavenging ooze. We don't really hate the graveyard hate. <laughs> it's not that big of a deal for us, but it's more that it's gaining them life, kind of offsetting this Ayara. Drain our opponent, draw a card. We're not actually close to running out of action here, though, because we have these Castle Lothwain, um, and we've got t 30 life. You, I think I think this is probably a sign that our deck is pretty good, because we have 30 life against Gruul Aggro, <laughs> which was formerly, you know, just one set ago, the best best set uh, deck in the format. All right, well, we'll do it again. Dusk Legion Zealot, draw another card. Another Yara is not really what we want, so we'll, we'll just go Knight of the Even Legion, ping our opponent. No attacks. We could we could sack now and see if we hit a two drop, but I think we'd rather just we'd rather just have the chump potential here. You know, chump with Dusk Legion Zealot and then sack it. Sure, block. Draw a card. Okay, land's not great. Okay, that's especially not great. We're gonna go Castle Lockthwain, take three. We got 31 life. We can afford to take three. Well, okay, that sucks. Um. Okay, we'll just pass turn. I was thinking, again, if we should sack main phase just to see if we draw, like, a two or three drop. Um, or I guess a four drop. Wow, they drew a collected company. Okay, our opponent's drawing pretty well. We've drawn the opposite of pretty well. But we do have this Knight of the Even Legion that we can activate. The hell is that thing? Oh, yeah, Hexproof from Black. I think they changed that icon, maybe? It, that was terrifying. <laughs> I thought it was some sort of demon that popped out of their deck. I don't, <laughs> didn't know what was going on. They still don't have great attacks here, though. Like, really the only thing that can get through is Scavenging Goose, which we can just jump. But if they attack with Harbinger, we can just block with Knight. Oh, opponent. It's not Protection from Black, it's Hexproof from Black. Do they draw a Pump Spell, or something... Some way for this not to go poorly. If they drew an Ember Cleave, I mean, if they go Coco into Ember Cleave, we just lose, but that's going to be pretty much any deck in the format. Okay, I think they just thought it was protection from Black, which sucks for them, but it is what it is. Thought Seize. Not especially good at this point in the game. Sure, they grow their kid. Come on, action. No more lands. Eee, another scavenging goose. Okay. Come on, man. Eee, that's enough lands. Um. Castle locked, Wayne. We're gonna draw a card. Take five. Oof. We gotta, we gotta draw something here. We can't just sit back and uh, do nothing, I don't think. One is thinking very hard about if they want to do s nothing in response to us <laughs> castle locked waning. I don't know, it's arguable we should just pass the turn here, but I feel like we gotta do something. Alright, we will... Hmm. I think we'll just pass the turn here. Activate Knight. Trade with their Scoos. Oh my god. Opponent. No attacks. Pass turn. Right, opponent comes back from their eternal rest to actually play the game. <laughs> uh they're about to they're they're about to actually time out. 
They went through about four ropes here uh, during my turn. So they gotta watch their clock, I think. Or they're gonna just, they're gonna have a turn they get to skip through here. Okay, well, we do kind of hold them back with this knight. They can't attack with everything unless they just want to throw stuff to the knight. So we're going to block here, make this trade. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. They grow their dude, sure. We got another knight. So we'll go Dusk Legion Zealot, draw a card, drain our opponent. Ooh, Ayara is definitely the worst card in our deck. Play the Knight of the Even Legion. And play Godless Shrine Tapped. But there's no real point to thought seizing them because it's either going to be something they're, they, uh, they're going to cast on their turn, or it's going to be a collected company. So there's no real reason to do anything but uh, hold on to this Thought Seize. They got a double grow on this knight, though. So they really can't attack with the Pelt Collectors unless they drew a removal spell or something. And eventually we're going to draw some removal for this Scavenging Goose. I don't, have we drawn any of... Yeah, there's a Fatal Push. How many Fatal Pushes do we have left? So we still got three Fatal Pushes left, so we should draw one pretty soon. Opponent's opponent has gained like 20 life off these scavenging uses. Probably more like, I don't know, probably more like 10, 11, 12, something like that. But we just have not been able to dig removal out of our deck for these scavenging uses. So this has turned into a slog. Alright, burning tree. Do you have anything to do with the burning tree? Looks like no. Okay, we will make this trade, sure. Block. So what we're going to do first, we're going to sack this Dusk Legion Zealot. See if we draw a Fatal Push. That's not a Fatal Push. Alright, so we do have to make the trade. Sure. Sure. We're not going to pump again. I guess we're not doing anything. Yeah. We'll bluff that we have, uh, we have a removal spell or something, I guess. Yep, grow their dudes. might be worth thought seizing them now, because they used up all their green mana on their scavenging uses, so they might actually have a card in hand that they were not able to cast um, because of that. So this might be one of the few chances left in the game where this thought seize will actually do anything. Thought seize is, you know, like most discard spells, very, very powerful in the early game. Thought seize especially is sometimes just game winning on turn one, um, but quite bad past that. Okay. Play Callous Blood Mage. Play, get a 1-1. One, one. Uh, thought sees our opponent. Yeah, it was something. <laughs> Alright, and then we'll go Sacrifice the Pest. Because these have Trample, there's no real reason to do... Okay, Ephemerate's pretty good. So we'll go Ephemerate... I guess what we'll do is play a Yara, untapped, train our opponent for two, play Godless Shrine tapped, pass the turn. This means we can still block the Burning Trees. We're going to just take 11 from these spell Collectors, but we gotta we got to find removal eventually, so we're just going to keep doing what we're doing, start draining them out. We finally got the life gain off the battlefield, which is a big deal. Because now as we're doing our whole blinking strategy, we're going to be draining them out. But we would have had them dead by now if it wasn't for the scavenging gooses gaining them infinity life. Um, but it, because we didn't find removal for the scavenging gooses, we're more likely to find removal for the Pell Collectors now. So hopefully it should all work out in the end. Sure, we just take the 11. That's fine. Okay, we will ephemerate the Blood Mage. 
Well, opponent's close to timing out. I gotta be careful. Make a pest token. Blink the blood mage. Even though it'd be kind of nice to have these Ayaras as backup if they do get removed, uh, we are going to just be playing them just to get them out of our hand, because we want to start Castle Lothwaning, which we can't really do. We can't be taking like two or three hits for uh, Castle Lothwain to be still in this game. I think we're actually going to draw with this one, because we already got the pest here. We already got the pest here to sacrifice to a Yara, so I think we'd rather just get a couple extra draws this turn. Because okay, well Finlurker is something. Play Finlurker. Finlurker we can actually grow to like a pretty gigantic degree at this point. We can make him a 5-5, five -five, which trades with their Pell Collector. It's pretty good. Okay, well. That doesn't really work. Actually, I probably should have just sacked it. Yeah. You know what? That was a mis I just wasted three mana for no reason, but... Ugh. Such is life. Um, I think we'll go... Ephemerate the Callous Blood Mage. Draw a card. We're just hunting for some removal here. Good god almighty. Alright, well we're gonna go play a Yara. Yep. Keep the untapped Ayara. Play Godless Shrine tapped, and pass turn. Ugh, we might we might lose. I, believe it or not, we have drawn so many lands in our 22 land deck that we might still lose. Like our opponent's on one, two, three, four, five, six lands, and we're on five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. <laughs> so yeah, we've drawn a lot of lands. Okay, uh, do we need a block here? No. I mean, if they have Emrakul, we're dead, but that's okay. Alright. Blink the Blood Mage. We are going to make a Pest Token this time to gain a little bit of life. Okay. Make a Pest Token. Anything besides a land should be good here, because... We can play a land, get a card out of our hand, and then castle lock the way even. So as long as we don't draw yet another land here, we should be okay. Really just desperate for a fatal push. Like, I can't believe we haven't drawn another one at this point. We've drawn one fatal push in the top half of our deck, which... Okay, well, that's something. Callous Blood Mage. We will... Make a pest. Gain some life. We will... Play this. Let's see. So if they attack with everything... I think we need to draw a card here. Sack, draw a card. Don't draw a land, please. Opponent has a collected company is the reason why I feel like we need to do this. Because we're going to just die to this collected company. Oh. Alright, well, uh, that's just going to make us die even more. Let's see, so they attack with everything here. We block, block. Block, block. I think we got to draw a card here. So we're probably going to lose this game, unfortunately. We just... Look at all the lands we've drawn. It's it's ridiculous, man. There's a Fatal Push. Ugh. We're at 24 cards, and that's the second Fatal Push we've drawn. Pretty brutal. But we are just going to Fatal Push this Pell Collector, which hopefully should keep us in the game. The other thing our opponent's going to have to deal with, though, is they are really low on time, and even if they do win this game... Even if they do win this game, it's going to be uh, almost no time left, so. Sure. Yep, go ahead. 
We're hopeful our opponent will just attack with everything here. Okay, we will Fatal Push Pelt Collector. Okay. Oh, this actually still kills us, doesn't it? I forgot this got Trample. So, if we block, 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 take six. We gotta draw a card here, I think, and hope we draw another removal spell. Yeah, I think that's what we gotta do. We gotta hope draw a Fatal Push here. Or we just die. Wow, yeah. So, I think yeah, most times we would win this game, but we just have drawn so many lands, it's unreal. Pretty brutal. And it, we just, uh, I guess we'll have to bring in, I think we took out some of it. Yeah, okay. Well, they got us. No blocks. So the problem with our opponent, or the problem that our opponent has here, though, they're going to have to kill us pretty quick in this last game to have any time. They've just uh, really, really, really taken their time with every decision and uh, <laughs> in their gruel aggro deck, which hasn't been good. But we're just going to bring in all the removal. I don't want to go through another game like that where we're, we would easily win the game if we ever drew removal, and just all <laughs> all of our fatal pushes happen to be the bottom cards of our deck. Uh, so just bring in some removal. Go down maybe a Dusk Legion Zealot. Um, maybe a couple Ephemerates just to make room. And maybe... I do want to keep one Grey Merchant just to gain a big chunk of life, but maybe we go down the Grey Merchant. Maybe we just play the full-on, you know, control game. Okay. So, yeah, that, that was pretty brutal. You know, maybe if we had set back and been a, a little bit more defensive, we could have stayed alive in that game, but it just, it really had to go a certain way for us to lose that, and it just happened to go that way. Here, I like our, I like this hand against them, so... Play Thought Seize. Go down to 16, which is a little bit brutal, but we can snipe a Collected Company out of their hand. We need to take the Burning Tree, actually. No. Because we can just kill the... the Pell Collector, so... It's not a big deal. Okay. Gifted Aetherborn. This pretty much locks down... Unless they've got a way to deal with this Gifted Aetherborn, it pretty much... I mean, they can go Burning Tree, Burning Tree, but Gifted Aetherborn doesn't care. <laughs> okay. Scoos is pretty good. Probably going to have to kill the Scoos. Yeah, we're going to go go to combat, attack, see what they do. Okay. Godless Shrine, play. Gifted Aetherborn, play. Fatal Push on the Scavenging Goose, pass the turn. Alright, so if our opponent goes land, like Spellbreaker here, it's okay. And see, I don't think this... I don't think they want to have a tap land in this deck. Ooh, another Fatal Push is nice. So we'll go to combat, attack. We are just going to keep the pressure on here. Because we're at the point where they have to trade two creatures for one. Eventually that's not going to be true anymore. So we're going to go... We're going to... We're going to draw a card. Draw a card with the Blood Mage. Okay. We were hoping to hit a land there so we could Fatal Push 2, but this is okay. Garrick's Harbinger. Alright, sure. No blocks. Okay, now we drew a land, so go to combat, attack with the gifted Aetherborn. Opponent's gonna double block it. Okay, they're gonna trade two burning trees for. I guess we could potentially. You know what? We'll save it. We might end up regretting that because that was our one removal spell we had in hand, but I couldn't resist. Keeping the Skipted Aetherborn alive seems really good against their deck, so I'm okay with this. And now we've got them to a pretty low life total. They don't have a Scavenging Goose, at least at the moment, so they can't gain a bunch. This is kind of posi the position we were in last game, except then they went Scavenging Goose into Scavenging Goose, 
uh, just gain like 15 life, so hopefully that doesn't happen again. <laughs> we will trade this Gifted Aetherborn with the Harbinger, yeah. This is fine. We would, we would be okay with this. As good as Gifted Aetherborn is, we don't want to let them just draw cards off that uh, Harbinger. Burning Tree, sure. We don't care about Burning Tree. Bone Crusher, sure. Okay, we're gonna go Callous Blood Mage. Make a 1-1. One, one. We are gonna attack with the Gifted Aetherborn too. Yeah, opponent half feels like they have to trade. Probably correct. And yeah, we'll draw a card right now. If we draw a land, we'd like to play it. Okay. Yeah, we had a pretty good chance of hitting either a land or a one drop there. That's a good chunk of what's left in our deck at this point. But we did not. That's okay though. Do they have the land for this Coco? Okay, looks like they don't. So we're gonna go Fin Lurker. What do they have at instant speed? We are just gonna attack here though. Just get in with the gang. Opponent's thinking really hard about what they want to do. But you don't have much time left, opponent. You're at five minutes and fifteen seconds. I'm at uh I'm at seventeen minutes, so <laughs> Opponent has used quite a bit of time. Let's see what they get rid of. It might just be... Co okay, they got rid of the Magma Spray. But unfortunately for our opponent... let's First, let's attack. Let's see if they trade... Do we want to attack with the Yara 2? Yeah, you know what? We're going to attack with the Yara 2. We just want to get their life low here. If they don't block with this Burning Tree, we're good. If they do block one of the Callous Blood Mages with it, yeah. Then we at least get four through... We just want to punch through as much damage as we can here, and now we're going to just devastate them. Eat the Coco out of their hand, which really cuts off one of their only pathways to victory here. Yeah, so I don't know what they draw at this point to stay in the game. I think we got this. And really, I think we, we kind of just dominated this, uh, this cruel aggro deck, which, again, best deck in the format not too long ago. Um... It just really, the only reason the last game was close is because we drew essentially every land in our deck. <laughs> um, but there was a, you know, it had to go a very particular way for us not to just destroy him that game. Uh, here, we're just going to kill our opponent here. Yep, make a pest. Ooh. We will sack the pest. Okay. Hmm. Guess we can't quite kill them this turn, so. Callous Blood Mage. I was hoping to draw one drop so we could just kill him this turn, but I think we'll just keep up the pest production. Put him down to one. Pass turn. Alright, opponent. <laughs> You're at one. You're dead to anything. You're actually just straight up dead on our untap next turn. Scavening goose. Alright, well. That means they're not dead to just one ping. So us just casting this Agadim's Awakening isn't death, but I think if we attack with everything and then cast Agadim's Awakening, that's probably death. Where did they... Oh, they had the Land of War Elves. I'm an idiot. Okay, this, that's that should do it. So, attack, attack, attack. Yeah. Attack, 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 attack. I could have attacked with the Yara too, actually. I should have, but it doesn't matter. Because now we can just cast this Yara. They'll both trigger each other. And even though we only keep one Yara, it's still uh, still double pings. They still both see each other as they leave the battlefield. So, quite good. Doesn't really matter how they block here. So if they uh, they block the, both the two ones, they go down to one. They're still dead to you, Yara. And, uh, yeah. If they just block the one ones, they're just <laughs> dead naturally, so. No, well, that's okay. Well our opponent just actually dies there, but if they <laughs> if they had blocked in a way where they weren't dead, we were still gonna be able to cast a Yara um, and double ping him there. So again, I think, you know, despite the fact that we we lost game two, it was 
it was a pretty unfortunate loss. It wasn't one of those where, oh, man, we got really stomped. It was one of those where we had to kind of draw poorly a lot of turns in a row, and especially because we were drawing like two or three turn cards a turn and still drawing poorly, and our opponent had to, uh, you know, not draw poorly. So um, I do think we just kind of are better than this, this deck. I think Ephemerate puts this deck over the top. Uh, Callous Blood Mage has a lot of versatility, so... Um, it's not exactly like the deck we're kind of set up to, to beat best. I think what we what we attack best with this deck, having the Callous Blood Mage in the main deck, is these graveyard-focused decks that are kind of running around the format right now. But um, outside, I mean, we, we did pretty well here against uh, what our opponent was doing, so can't really complain. All right, sweet. Took down Gruul Aggro. Nice. Nice. <laughs>